This video gives examples of finding four different measures of risk-adjusted return, which are Jensen's alpha, the trainer measure, the sharp ratio, and the m-squared measure. We are given information for two portfolios, the market, and the risk-free rate. The formulas that you see here may be expressed differently than in your text, but they are in fact the same formulas. In particular, we will be thinking of the equations in terms of excess return, which is an investment's return in excess of the risk-free rate. I would suggest, in fact, making a new row for these values. For portfolio A, the excess return is its return 10% minus the risk-free rate 3%, which is 7%. Subtracting 3% from the other returns will give us the other excess returns. Jensen's alpha is calculated by taking the portfolio's excess return and subtracting beta times the market's excess return. For portfolio A, we take its excess return 7 and subtract beta 1.1 times the market's excess return 5. That gives us positive 1.5%. The intuition here is that our portfolio A is slightly more volatile than the market as measured by its beta of 1.1. Therefore, if the market's excess return was 5%, we would expect our portfolio to have an excess return of 1.1 times 5, or 5.5%, just because of the extra risk it took on. In fact, our excess return was 7%, meaning that Portfolio A outperformed the market on a risk-adjusted basis. One note about the numbers we are putting into the formulas. Here we put in percentages 7 and 5, so we've gotten a result as a percentage 1.5. We could also put in decimals 0.07 and 0.05 and gotten a result as a decimal 0.015, which is the same as 1.5%. Just remember to say consistent. Repeating the process for portfolio B, we take its excess return 9% and subtract beta 2.1 times the market's excess return of 5%. That gives us negative 1.5%. Given the amount of risk taken on as measured by beta, this portfolio returned 1.5% less than it should have. We don't actually calculate Jensen's alpha for the market itself. If we did, we'd just be comparing the market's return to itself, and we would just get zero. The trainer measure gives a risk-adjusted return using beta as the measure of risk. To calculate trainer, we just divide the excess return by beta. For portfolio A, that is 7 divided by 1.1. For portfolio B, it's 9 divided by 2.1. And for the market, it's 5 divided by 1. The results are essentially telling us the amount of return we received per unit of beta that we took on we see that Portfolio A beat the market's risk-adjusted return, while Portfolio B did not. Putting it another way, while Portfolio B had the highest absolute return at 12%, it took too much extra risk to get that return. The Sharpe Ratio is the same as the trainer measure, except that it uses standard deviation as the measure of risk. For Portfolio A, that's 7 divided by 14. For Portfolio B, it's 9 divided by 22, and for the market, it's 5 divided by 12. The results are telling us the amount of return we received per unit of standard deviation we took on. Again, this measure shows Portfolio A is having the best risk-adjusted return. The M-squared measure uses this formula here. We take the risk-free rate, RF, and add the excess return multiplied by the market's standard deviation divided by the portfolio's standard deviation. For portfolio A, that is the risk-free rate, 3, plus its excess return, 7, multiplied by the market standard deviation, 12, divided by the portfolio standard deviation, 14. That gives us 9%. What this tells us is that if our portfolio were adjusted to have the same risk as the market, it would have returned 9%. This is good because the market actually returned just 8%. Putting it another way, we expect Portfolio A to have an advantage in terms of return simply because it took on more risk. If we adjust for that advantage, 
portfolio A still would have outperformed the market with a 9% return compared to the 8% return. For portfolio B, the M squared measure is the risk-free rate 3 plus the excess return 9 multiplied by the market standard deviation 12 divided by the portfolio standard deviation 22. That gives us 7.9%. Adjusting for risk, this portfolio did not quite beat the market. We don't need to calculate M squared for the market. M squared is making an adjustment for portfolio's risk compared to the market risk, so there'd be no adjustment to make here, and we'd be left with the market's return of 8%. Overall, we see that both Portfolio A and Portfolio B beat the market in terms of absolute return. Portfolio A shows some evidence of skillful investing since it beats the market even on a risk-adjusted basis. Portfolio B shows no evidence of skillful investing. When the market is up 8%, someone picking investments completely at random with beta 2.1 and standard deviation 22% should have done better than the 12% that Portfolio B actually returned. It underperformed the market on a risk-adjusted basis.